Welcome to the KBB From the Tap podcast. I'm managing editor Leslie Claggett, and this week I'm really happy to talk with Bob Bakes, co-founder and head of design at Bakes and Crop, a luxury kitchen design and manufacturing company with showrooms in New York City, the Hamptons, Long Island, Michigan, and one upcoming in Palm Beach, a veritable empire. Be sure to subscribe to KBB's YouTube channel and click the, the like button on our videos. You can also subscribe to KBB's From the Tap podcast on such apps as Apple, Spotify, Pandora, and Google Podcasts. And please feel free to leave a review. Today, we're going to discuss participating in design show houses. That's a topic you know well, Bob. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you for joining me. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, uh, like Leslie said, we've, we've been um, slowly and steadily expanding across um, the eastern seaboard, and we're very excited about the opening of the uh, Palm Beach show. Um, I'm sure. I'm West sure. Sarah West Palm Beach coming up back into this year, so it's uh, all good. Uh, do you remember the first time you visited a show house? Where first it was? Time, what kind time. of impression it left on you? Uh, the first time I ever did one, I believe it was back in 2008. And it was the uh, Hampton Designer Show House. That was when I first participated as a, as a design um, element to it. The first time I saw a show house was when I was uh, in 2004, when I used to work for my previous employer. And he was doing a show house in, in the Hamptons. It was the Hampton Designer Show House again. And that's where the thing started. And that goes all the way back to 2004. So it, it was an interesting uh, moment, I think, to see what some of these designers and how they created their spaces and now there was either coordination or not coordination depending on whether there was a, a, an overall coordinating designer who had overview of the house and different show houses operate in different ways some will have just purely individual elements of excellence and um, some might call it a little bit crazy in some rooms and that's fine too because these designers really have such a talent and other times they, there'll be a coordinating concept where one designer will take on an overview and have some kind of not necessary impact, but just a little bit of guidance from room to room. So perhaps the house has a slightly more connection to its elements than perhaps in some other show houses, and they vary completely. So there's no there's no good way of doing them. There's a bad way of doing them. They're, this way show houses is done, and it creates some just wonderful moments of wow when you can walk into these spaces and see what these guys have done. They do, they do. Um, as a designer, what is your motivation for doing show houses? Are you trying to attract new clients, explore creative visions or support a cause? Uh, all of the above. Quite clearly, show houses are an investment. We'll talk perhaps a little bit more about that in later on in the podcast. The uh, concept of show house is to increase um, product awareness, company awareness, and the foundation knowledge that people in the public have about a company like ours. People who might not get the opportunity to see us normally will come and see us, or will come and see the house, and then by default, they'll come and see us. And in certain show houses, there's a high degree of a contributor element, and Kips Bay is a particular one there, where um, I have a the, an affinity with the Kids Bay Boys and Girls Club in that uh, as, as a company, we're a very firm supporter of that, what all the work they do. And whenever I get involved in Kips Bay, I have these moments of just, I, I know exactly why I've done this because it, we sit with these 20 odd designers of sheer excellence across the country who gravitated together and given their expertise, services and products to support this wonderful cause. And so that is purely from the charity aspect. In this most recent one, where we did one in Palm Beach, which we just finished. Yes. And that was open for about four weeks. Um, the, the intent was to just be part of the Kips Bay universe again. Um, we did it first in 2017. So to be part of it and have be reminded of all those reasons why we did it in 20, 2017, to redo it in 2022, and to, to have that as a, it was almost as a test of it, particularly in this instance, because we were definitely gonna be opening up in 
Northwest Park and to have that in the same location to sort of test the market and see how people reacted to our products and our presentation and who we are as a company. It's not just about what we build and what we show, it's about who we are as a company. And to have that opportunity was a real kicker to our development into West Palm. So there's there's a number of reasons why people do show houses. I personally yes. do because they're a lot of fun. They, they, they get the company energized and we have the group comes out and we make a moment of it. And it's one of those reasons for the opportunity to do them. It gives me uh, a reason for really enjoying what I do to a very large extent. And they're just so much fun. Wonderful, wonderful. It, it sounds like it really, no matter how experienced you are, it just rekindles the creative impulses. It does, for sure. There's creative create, creativity with thought to balance, which is always how we design anyway. And then there's the energy that you need to put into it from day one to day 13, 14, 15, whatever it is with the timeline that we have to produce this product. And it's a definitive drop dead deadline, of course. So that energizes everybody to react like that, which is, uh, again, it's another layer of uh, excitement that's brought into a show. Nothing like a deadline to motivate people. An absolute deadline, not a deadline maybe, but this is an absolute deadline. Yeah, this yes. is hand over to the press by a certain date, otherwise we've got problems. So. <laughs> but everybody well, always does it and it never, even at the 24 hours before, if some rooms aren't quite finished, there's that last 24 hours when everything just comes together. And I haven't been involved in, I bet maybe I've been involved in about 10, 10 show hours, I guess, over the last 10, 15 years. And there has never been one occasion when somebody hasn't been able to complete them. Uh, this is a good point for you to maybe, for designers who have not had the show house experience, but are interested in exploring it. Could you talk briefly about how a show house happens, uh, how does one apply? Uh, and when you're accepted to the project, do you interact with design, other designers or do you work independently? Okay, um, so on your first point, uh, I'll take the example of Kips Bay uh, as, a, as one example of how you, you're in effect chosen. Um, there's it's sort of like a lottery and you put yourself forward as a company that would like to do the show house because it's because of the importance of that one uh, you have to put forward your portfolio which is the first we did that in 2017 because we weren't that well known to keep spare the time and along with a number of other companies uh, in the same format like kitchen designers and they chose us so that was 2017 of course in 2022 we had the experience of 2017 and they had the knowledge of what bakes and crop was so when we put forward our portfolio for 2022 then I was confident that we would be invited to, to take part in that so you're invited into the Kitch Bay Show House you're not I'd like to do it please put me down for that room that doesn't happen okay other circumstances when you're doing it with a magazine perhaps um, or the Hampton Designer Show House then it's not so much a lottery is you can you can say whether you would like to do it um, there has to be a a level of, I guess, dynamic within the company that the magazine is going to look at and say, yeah, I think these guys are going to be appropriate. Um, it's not that anybody could just say, I oh, fancy doing a show house. Let's just, just do one. It doesn't work like that. You have to be, there's a knowledge within the media networks that will um, promote and put forward. So if you have that kind of presence and you feel like you want to do a show house, then you speak to the media people who are uh, perhaps preparing for one, um, whether it's a uh, Lux or a gallery or whichever of any of these magazines that are doing a show house and put forward your interest or perhaps a house beautiful piece that they're doing where they're decorating a house and they're going to offer it out to the public to either raise money for the magazine or whether they're going to raise money for a charitable or whether it's going to be a crossover between the two. The Hampton Designer Show House, which I have a lot of experience in, obviously we started in the Hamptons, the, um, the organization there is coupled with the Southampton Hospital, which is something that's very dear to my heart as well, because I live in the area and support it. And they're, 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 they will choose, try and choose a more of a local source because it's more of a sort of, a bit more of a local kind of presence. Um, so it's not so much of the companies deciding they want to do one, although that is a decision they need to make, it's whether they're going to get chosen to do it as well. Well, once you're you're on the list and you know you're going to participate in the show house, mm -hmm. uh, 
is, do you operate independently of designers of other rooms? Do you coordinate? Uh, how does that work? There's, because the, the kitchen is, a, is, is more of a unifying event for a couple of rooms that exist on the first floor, generally speaking in house. So the kitchen through to the dining room, through to the breakfast room, there's usually a fairly strong connection. Uh, I found in the past, and it's probably a continuing uh, sequence of events for that kind of dynamic, it's gonna be that there's almost certainly gonna be a connection between those two decorators. Uh, individual circumstances, it differs slightly. In the most recent one, there was almost a separate space for the dining room. And there was, there was little collaboration between the two of us. And that didn't matter because the thing still worked in the events that worked in isolation. We did one in 2013 or 2014, where it was a, a kitchen, breakfast room, dining room, all rolled into this big sort of family um, congregation center where we had a very close collaboration with the designers of the space, which was immediately adjacent to ours. We, we had to, otherwise there would have been no uh, cohesiveness in the in the room set and there has to be right. cohesion. I can't, I'm not just gonna present a product which just stands alone on its own, uh, even though that's a wonderful thing. It needs to, the public needs to see that the kitchen is part of a much bigger picture and it's gonna blend with the rest of the house. So when, when those rooms are so closely connected, just by having no physical barriers whatsoever between spaces, and there's two different designers preparing the spaces, then it's always best that there's collaboration between the two. And for the most part, there always is. Um, when, when you begin to develop the design, is there a, a list of preferred vendors or suppliers? Okay, there's a, a contributing vendor and sponsor list that will be attached to the show house uh, management. Again, I'll use it for instance because it's easy, for, uh, I think, to describe right. for people to understand that. Uh, in the most recent one, there was uh, an appliance donator, there was a, uh, a countertop donator, there was fixtures and fittings donators. Uh, people like uh, Kona and Roll and those guys, they will be approached by the show house organization and say, <coughs> and be asked, would you like to contribute or be a sponsor? And they sponsor uh, an amount of product that can be used by the designers. Uh, and that's usually sponsored as a sponsorship, so it's free of charge. Um, are you free to bring in your own suppliers as well? No. People who are not on the list? No. Okay, that's interesting. These, these, uh, sponsors, these sponsors donate a lot of product and they spend a lot of time and energy. And it's our responsibility to make sure as, as the sort of overall designer of the kitchen space, that we design the kitchen to incorporate their product and show off their product as well. Okay, very good. Um, now, sometimes people get a little antsy talking about the financials. Uh, so I certainly understand if you don't wanna go into to great detail, but um, are, are, is participation in a show house uh, financially rewarding um, process? The, the financial side of a show house um, varies greatly depending on the organization. With Kips Bay, we're very, we're, we're incredibly proud as a company to be able to contribute our work product, our design expertise, our time, our effort, and our actual product when we contribute that free of charge. It's a complete donation to Kips Bay because in, in part it's the organization, the way they work, and that's fine. But in part it's because that's, that's supporting what is, it's a charitable organization and the char charity side of that organization is looking to raise hundreds of thousands of dollars for these kids. So if they're spending on product and spending on designers, then it's kind of counterproductive. So that doesn't really work. So that's from the financial side of that. So if you, if you ever get invited to Kips Bay, that's absolute, it's an absolute honor to be able to work with that organization. And I would do it again in a heartbeat anytime they ask me. For the other organizations that run show houses, sometimes there's a dynamic where uh, a, um, a kitchen design company may have been involved with the developer of a house. And this goes back to my Hampton designer show house days, where I was lucky enough to be doing houses with developers and developers would then offer their house to the show house. So there was, there's, sometimes there's some kind of payment for product. Uh, if, a, if a house 
turns into a show house when conceptually it wasn't initially when it was first started. And other circumstances when a magazine will be looking for a house, perhaps to do some renovation work, and the owner of the house might say, uh, I'm, I'm happy to have the show people come in and take over my house for the best part of three or four months when I kind of like to live in it, but I'm, I'm happy to do that. Uh, and, but I would appreciate some, I guess you could just simply say discounted product to, to a large extent to make the show house happen. So there's a few different dynamics from some funding to a little bit more funding to zero funding, but the zero funding is totally charity based. And I think it's absolutely appropriate. Yes, indeed. Um, let's talk about your most recent show house experience. I think uh, Kipps Bay Palm Beach just closed yesterday or, or the day before. Um, what were you looking to accomplish with your design for the kitchen for this year's Kipps Bay Decorator Show House in Palm Beach? The, the Kipps Bay Show House was, uh, as I mentioned a little bit earlier in the piece, was a precursor to us opening in um, West Palm later on in 2022. We wanted to show the market what Bakes and Crop was currently doing and the, the image of what Bakes and Crop is as a company. I wanted to create something that showed very much if somebody was to imagine what a classic BK kitchen would look like, what it would look like in Florida. We haven't reinvented the wheel for, for the Florida market. I don't believe in doing that. In the same way as um, if people ask me about what's trending, or what do, you, what do you think are the trends in the market? I think what we do is the trends in the market. I think we are, I like to think, and I think with some justification that we are trendsetters in the marketplace of kitchens, like high-end luxury kitchens. So what we tried to produce was something that, it was show house, so it had a little bit of extra pop in it, but it was still, so you could supplant that kitchen into somebody's house in its entirety, and they would be just as happy with it as if they were walking around a show house. It didn't need to be something that was overpoweringly different. And the market, I firmly believe that our association with our clients from the Northeast to the Southeast understands and appreciates what we do as a company, stylistically where we are. And to create something that was disciplined within the BK framework, but had that extra little, little bit of pop because it was a show house. Uh, we also had a slight, um, in a show house, it's unusual to have any client interaction in as much as the clients say, well, can you do this? Uh, in this one, we had one ask and we created it. It was a slightly different layout than perhaps I would normally do, but the singular ask was achieved and the clients who now inherit their kitchen, who own the house are incredibly happy. So the, um, the designing of a show house is important to me to be, incredibly realistic about what you're putting into a show house. I want people to see what we are as a company, not what we're trying to be. And so where we are and our image in Southeast Florida is the same as our image in Washington, DC. It's the same as our image in Nantucket, uh, up and down the Eastern seaboard. Bakes and Crop has a, has a sense of who they are and that's what we show in the show house. Yes, indeed. Um at Palm Beach, did you feature any innovative or interesting new products or new installs? What what we um, really do? Yeah, we well, love about that. Yeah, as as a company, we're always looking for um, moderate development. Of course, we want to stay um, not just current. We want to experiment as well. So we introduced two new finishes, which we hadn't used before. Uh, slight iterations on our on our current sig what we call our signature finish um, portfolio, but also a couple of new ones. There was a matte black, which is particularly hard to do really well because it, it kind of think of stains and all sorts of nasty things but we figured that way of doing that and we created a new stain on the walnut at the latter part of last year we introduced a new door style which we introduced into the um, palm beach showroom uh, the show house rather and then i redesigned a little bit of hardware because I do, I do hardware design as well and so i redesigned some hardware um, and we showed that up too so but it's all stuff that's moving through bk as a company that we're going to incorporate in our designs in the houses that we do. So it wasn't just a piece that we created just for the show house. This is the, these are the things that we're putting in homes across the Eastern Seaboard. Could you talk a little bit more about the hardware? Um, I've seen it, it's beautiful. It seems to have um, 
a slight industrial feel to it, those old fashioned refrigerator poles and hinges. Uh, I've been a huge fan of that concept for years and years and years. And we've been using items that are readily available. And during the course of the last year or so, I made a promise to myself to redesign it, to make it a little bit more, perhaps industrial, a little bit more contemporary without being overly contemporary. And this was the development of that. Um, the original uh, hinges for the fridges, the large square type of hinges and those latches, they've been around for uh, a couple of three years, perhaps maybe the hinges a little bit longer than that. I redesigned those some time ago, but I wanted to have a cabinet only component which went with that. So it was a full family, a full suite of hardware that people could use to accent their cabinetry as well. Not just their, uh, the ice box con concept on the uh, large appliance panels, which we have been doing for some time, whether it's the modern or the old style hinges. Uh, this company doesn't make the ice box hinges and that's fine, but I wanted to design something that's a little bit more signature based around Bakes and Crop. And this is the result of that. Um why don't we talk a little bit about the triumphs and the terrors of this project? Hmm. There's always, How do we have? always both. <laughs> the, um, the triumphs, well, the tri one of my defining moments was when we got invited back into the Kip Space Show House again. That was the, I think, one of the best moments for me of the whole experience to be able to join that organization and contribute to the organization again. Some of the trials and tribulations are obviously caused by supply chain issues, which anybody in the kitchen business is experiencing right now. We're lucky enough as a manufacturer that we've been um, fortunate to have, it. we have, we build our own products. So we, 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 we buy in bulk and et cetera, et cetera. We protect ourselves, uh, I think incredibly well um, from that. The appliance supply chain issue is a different animal. And anybody who's trying to buy a fridge these days will know that. If you buy a high-end fridge from one of the uh, high-end manufacturers, then the lead times can be, did you say what? It's just, it, it's pretty stunning. Um, we have one of those items, a signature piece. The uh, I'll name the names because it's important that people know who contributed to the show house as well. This was from Gen Air. They've recently arranged a new suite, or launched a new suite of appliances, two different styles. Um, one is called Noir, and one is called Rise. And... We have a feature piece in the island, a range top, and right up until the 11th hour, it was the last piece that hadn't shown up. And you had to hand over for the <laughs> top fee. And everybody started running around like headless chickens, trying to find a range top that we at least, we could be, we just could be, I was told we couldn't Photoshop there. I said, okay, just get something in there that looks okay. So we managed to get something in there at the 11th hour. And then the, the incorrect range top turned up, but it was actually better than what I'd anticipated. So there was some lucky thing. It just, there was just a bit of fate that came into play. Um, but the supply, and agent, supply chain issues that exist throughout the industry, when you get involved in something with such a finite timeline as that, then it, they will have an impact. Mm -hmm. If you have to run around scouring showrooms in the southeast for a range top, which I think is what the organisation did, and we managed to find one. So, but other than that, considering the amount of work, the house was a 1923 house, previously owned by the mayor of Palm Beach, and the clients who bought it when they offered it to the show house, uh, it required substantial renovation within the kitchen area, primarily because that's that's the area that has the biggest kind of there's the biggest amount of building work. So from starting the initial design concept to handing over on at the end of February, um, the time frame was tight, but we found things that had to be corrected, things that had to be done, plumbing, electrics, and so on. Uh, and then new flooring, we took out a couple of walls, we closed things off, we opened things up. So it, it grew in its, um, in its extent over the course of the development, but we still managed to achieve the goal of handing that over on time. What was the timeline for the production? Uh, well, can the, you talk about <clears throat> your design phase, how long that lasts, then the mm -hmm. procurement and the install? The, we, we first saw the place back in early November of last year. Uh, we were awarded it, I think, at the end of November. And then we had December, January, and through to the middle of February to really work through and hand over a completed project. As a, uh, 
that, that was fairly easy. I, I say that sort of work, uh, a bit tongue in cheek. Uh, if I relate that to the, excuse me, <clears throat> if I relate that to the first show as we did in 2017, that was in New York City. On day one, I saw the house for the first time. And six weeks later, we had to hand over a finished product. So I hadn't even seen the place before day one. So we designed in a couple of days, we built in about 10 days. We installed after 15 days, 17 days, and then went through the installation process of counters, electrics, plumbing, and six weeks less a day, we handed over a finished product. So that was a much tighter timeline. This one, we had a little bit more time. The planning was about two weeks, as I recall. Mm -hmm. manufacturing because we're a manufacturer we we can compress manufacturing times with an event like this if we were buying product from a, a third party source then we have less control so as a manufacturer it makes it easier for us to do a show house uh, i'll just use a side example of um, lead times uh, lead times generally speaking in the industry are extended right now uh, hours too but for the most part if we had an emergency that we had to react to we we can react to it so we have the dynamics in place to be able to do that so from design to installation to completion so it was probably about eight to ten weeks which is it's okay we can live with it without, <laughs> without people getting too upset <laughs> we, have a, we have a fantastic the the organizational capabilities of where we are now compared to we were, where we were 10 years ago uh, significantly improved so if somebody says to me yeah you've got two weeks to do a show house it's in dallas or it's in san francisco and uh, almost without exception i'm going to first um, ask who it's for and if it's for an organization or a um, charity that I believe in I say absolutely. I imagine one of the things that really streamlines the, the process is that you're not working with an actual individual client there you are have complete control and you know what you're going to do and it gets done there's no back and forth yeah is that true? That is true for the most part in this case there was some client involvement which had an extra layer of um I, not, not so much the, the, the approval of the drawing set, but there was there was a sense that we had to get we had to get drawings in front of the client, basically, to, to mm. say this is this is what we're going to do. And if there was a, a real adverse reaction, then we would have to come back to the drawing board. But what we were proposing was that was great. Let's just get it. Let's just get going. Perfect. <laughs> so, but normally there isn't a, any client interaction, no, which does okay. take a layer of the approval process. Is, speaking of approvals, um, do you ever have to deal with building permits in a show house, or is that just it's non-structural work? No, there is a building permit involved with the show houses generally, but that's usually handled by the house. Uh, we just uh, piggyback off of that. Great, that's good. So um, you have a wealth of experience in this area. What kind of advice would you give to a designer who wants to work on a show house? Um, um, just be prepared. Understand the demands it's going to put on your organization. Don't get involved in it if you, if you don't really think that you can achieve the goal ahead of time. Don't put yourselves and the organization or the house in any kind of jeopardy by not being able to complete what you set out to do. Super, super important. These are absolute definitive drop dead deadlines which you have to have the organizational capabilities to meet. If you feel as though you can, then you approach magazines, you make sure you keep your eye on who is doing the show houses. You would scour the uh, media for show house presentations, find out who the uh, people who are, are organizing them, Chris Bay, Gary Magazine, so on. Get yourself noticed to those players in the show house circuit. It's like a circuit. So get yourself noticed. And when you are noticed on that circuit, then you may well get approached to, with the uh, proposal, would you be interested in partaking in this particular show house or that particular show house? So get yourself noticed. But going back to my original comment about be prepared is, if you think you're prepared, then just double check and make sure you're double prepared because it's a journey and it's a short one and it's intense and you cannot fail. Well, thank you so much, Bob Bakes of Bakes and Crop, for joining us today on KBB's From the Tap podcast. Uh, it's been a delight speaking with you, and best of luck on your next show house venture.
Wonderful. Thank you for your taking the time to speak with me this morning. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.